Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Windows Autopilot Overview video series. In this session, we'll take a closer look at the OEMs and partners' experiences with Windows Autopilot. In the previous session, we took a look at the Windows Autopilot experiences from the IT Pro's point of view. Let us now take a closer look at the OEMs and partners' experiences. The key to this stage for OEMs and partners is to ensure that devices are shipped based on the requirements defined by the IT pros for each of the scenarios that Windows Autopilot will be used for. For example, the operating system version that devices will be shipped with and any potential hardware requirements such as TPM 2.0, which is required by the pre-provisioned deployment and self-deploying modes of Windows Autopilot. The next step is to ensure that these devices are registered with the Windows Autopilot service. OEMs and partners have different options to register devices. OEMs can register devices using the API method, using manufacturer, model, serial number, or Windows product ID. Partners also have these options to register devices in the partner portal, but they can also register them using the PKID, as well as a combination of serial number, product ID, and hardware hash. Similar to the option offered in the Microsoft Endpoint Manager portal, partners can also use the hardware hash CSV upload method, but this is not a recommended option given that it requires harvesting information from each device. Some of the optional items that can be registered with Autopilot include the ability to assigning devices with a specific group tag, which can be quite helpful in grouping devices to allow for the custom targeting of apps and policies. For a more personalized experience, devices can also be pre-assigned to specific users, and we'll walk through this process in more detail later in the session. Partners can add value by executing the Windows pre-provision deployment workflow of Windows Autopilot to ensure that devices can be pre-cached with all required apps and policies prior to shipping the devices to end users. Finally, devices will then need to be either shipped directly to end users or to schools depending on the device distribution methodology that's going to be used. Now let's take a look at the device pre-provisioning and partner registration processes. Starting with the partner relationship request. So we're going to start that process by going to the partner center and clicking on customers. We're then going to is create a relationship request and in the relationship request uh, for autopilot registration purposes you do not need delegated administrative privileges so you can uncheck that if that's not your intent and you can see that the link uh, in the request below is going to get adjusted accordingly to determine whether or not uh, additional delegated privileges has been granted and you know, again for autopilot device registration purposes that's not required so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that uh, and we are going to copy the message so we can go send an email to the administrator uh, that we're going to be establishing a relationship with okay so fairly simple here we're going to send that over now we can look at this request from uh, the customer side so customer is going to go ahead and open that request and is going to see the link that you just provided to them uh, that defines the relationship uh, that you're going to be establishing with them. Go ahead and copy that link and open that up uh, on the browser. And that's going to take you directly to accept the agreement uh, to authorize the partnership. Um, so you go ahead and accept the relationship. And once you've done that, you'll see uh, that you're going to be able to confirm uh, the type uh, of rights that the partner is going to have uh, in your tenant. In this case, it's simply a reseller with no roles signed because we did not choose to do the, the additional delegated rights. Uh, and now the partner is ready uh, to begin uh, registering devices in your tenant. Now that we have gone through the initial steps of establishing a relationship with a partner, let's take a look at the steps partners will take to register devices. First, we we'll start by going to the Microsoft Partner Center portal and selecting the customer option 
and searching for the customer that we just established a partnership with. In this case, it's the I4E school district. Once a customer has been selected, we can then select the devices option to begin the device registration process. In this case, the customer has requested that devices that are registered have a specific group tag associated with them. So we're gonna go ahead and click Add Devices, and we're going to select the option to add a new group name, and we're gonna set the group tag that was requested by the customer, and select the devices that should be associated with that specific group tag, and hit Save. Once these devices have been processed, we can then confirm that they were uploaded successfully into the customer's tenant, and confirm that we have the right serial number. So now the device processing has been complete. We can now verify that the device serial number is correct. In this case, it is, and it begins with 9199. We can now switch over to the customer side by going to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager portal, and then go to Devices, Windows Devices, and Windows Enrollment. We should be able to see under Devices, all of the devices that are currently registered. Intune syncs devices that are registered with the autopilot service every 12 hours. But if you want devices to be brought in right away, we can select the sync option and hit refresh. And we can now confirm that the device that we just recently added indeed got registered into this customer tenant. So what we can do now is to verify in Azure Active Directory that this device object has also been created in the tenant. So we'll go to Azure Active Directory, click on Devices, and confirm that this device has indeed been added to the tenant, which indeed it has. It starts with 9199. The other thing that we can do is that we can confirm that any specific group, dynamic group in this case, that is pulling in any devices that have that specific group tag that we just added, now gets updated to include that specific device that we just added. In this case, we have a group uh, that's pulling in devices with that specific group tag, and we can confirm that this device was indeed pulled in into that group. So what that means is that all autopilot profiles or applications and policies that are deployed leveraging this specific group would then successfully target uh, this device, and in the case of an autopilot profile that's assigned to this specific group, the device would then be properly assigned to that respective autopilot profile and will be ready for the next step. Before we take a closer look at the Windows Autopilot for pre-provisioned deployment experience, let's take a quick look at how a user can be assigned to a specific device for a simpler and more personalized device setup experience. First, We'll log in to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center, and we're going to go to Devices, Windows, Windows Enrollment, and Devices. Here we'll list all of the devices that have been previously registered with the Windows Autopilot service. So we're going to go ahead and select the first device. And as you can see, there is no current user assignment to the specific device. So once we ensure that the device that we want to assign the user to uh, information is correct, we can proceed with selecting the appropriate device, selecting the option Assign User, and we're going to locate Allison Ochoa, who is going to be assigned to this specific device, select the user, click Select. And now I can see that the device is now assigned to this specific user, Allison Ochoa, and to make it for a more personalized experience, I'm actually going to say just Allison. And I'm going to click Save. So this is going to play a role into the overall experience that we'll be seeing next for the Windows Autopilot for pre-provision deployment, because it will include now a user assignment uh, to that specific device as well. The Windows Autopilot profile configuration is now complete. Let's walk through the Windows Autopilot pre-provision deployment workflow. The Windows Autopilot pre-provision deployment workflow is ideal for scenarios where devices need to be pre-cached with apps and policies. Those policies and apps can be targeted to the device, or in the case that the device is assigned to a specific user, it can also be targeted to the user. This scenario is also ideal for ensuring that devices get MDM enrolled before the end user 
walks through the end user part of the flow. So now let's take a look at what the pre-provision deployment will look like for a scenario where a user is specifically assigned to this device. The device will then boot into the out-of-box uh, experience. Once it gets to the out-of-box experience, you can then select the region and hit Windows key five times and select the Windows Autopilot provisioning option and select continue. We'll then pick up the autopilot profile that's been assigned to this specific device and we we'll confirm that picked up the right organization and the assigned user that's been assigned to this device, which is Allison Ochoa. And we'll hit provision. Now we get to the very familiar enrollment status page and the device preparation stage is where the device is going to get properly MDM enrolled. And once that step is complete, we'll move over to the device setup part of the process, which will process any security policy, certificates, network connections, and applications that are targeted, as I said earlier, to both the device and the user. And once that part is complete, since this is only the ad admin part of the flow, uh, you'll get a green screen if everything went well, and you can just select the option reseal to complete the process. If something went wrong during that process, you would see a red window with a specified error that occurred. Once that process completes, the admin portion of the process is complete and the user can now walk through the end user experience part of the flow. This is the end of module 6.6, .6, Windows Autopilot for OEMs and Partners. In the next and final session, we'll be taking a closer look at the end user's experiences with Windows Autopilot.